Hi, I'm Pastor Steve Talmadge of Love of Christ Lutheran Church, and each week Pastor Nanette Christofferson and I seek to provide a brief introduction to two of the assigned lectionary Bible readings for the upcoming Sunday. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Old Testament reading assigned for Sunday, March 20th, Isaiah 55, verses 1 to 9. The background of this lesson is uh, King Cyrus, the Persian king, has issued an edict for exiles to be free to return to their homelands. So this reading comes at the end of what scholars often con, uh, consider to be Second Isaiah. And, um, and it's that word to exiles that they need to get ready to come back to Israel. And then it's also a word to people who have already arrived in Jerusalem. And uh, not everyone left Babylonia. Uh, many had started their lives and brought children and grandchildren into the world. So uh, they stayed put. But, uh, but there was a remnant group of folks who made their way back to Jerusalem to uh, begin to do the rebuilding of uh, the city of Jerusalem and the temple. And, and that's primarily recorded in the books of Ezra and Nehemiah. Uh, the territory to which the people of Israel return to is uh, in rubble. It's, it's in ruins. And you um, and, uh, uh, need to remember that in 587, 86 uh, BC or, or BCE, uh, the Babylonians tore the walls down and destroyed the temple as they exiled uh, the best and the brightest out of um, uh, Jerusalem and, and Israel into their, uh, their um, empire. And so nothing really had been done to the city. And so it was a complete uh, rebuild. Our text is an, is an invitation to a new day and a new chapter. So let's take a look at our reading. Verse 1. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. God is providing for thirsty people at no cost to themselves. As they come back into the ruins and the rubble and they begin to rebuild a new chapter and a new life, God is going to provide for them. God is going to abundantly provide for them. And that's all about grace. The invitation is to a joyous feast. And you can imagine people who remember the stories of how grand and glorious the temple was and and the walls of the city of Jerusalem, and and just uh, that sense of identity of being God's people, and then being uh, exiled, uh, being sent away, uh, now to be a part of that group returning uh, to restart what was started long ago. Uh, this is a time to uh, to look at the challenge, but to see it as an opportunity for joy. Verse 2a, why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? The invitation is to feast on that which only God can provide, which is everlasting and satisfying, which our money could never purchase or our efforts ever create. God is inviting these returning exiles to come back and to uh, to. Uh, restart a relationship that had been fractured by people chasing after other gods, uh, pursuing uh, economic and political interests at the expense of their spiritual soul. And, uh, and so this, uh, this word is, you know, look at where you're investing your life and what actually will bring you satisfaction. And if it's not connected to God, you're going to end up empty. Verse 2b. Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Listening to Yahweh is wrapped into a metaphor of delighting in rich food. The word of God, the words of God, the invitation of God are an invitation to feast on the wisdom of God that leads to life, that allows us to know joy, fills us with peace. Verse 3. Incline your ear. Come, come to me, listen, so you may live. I will make with you a steadfast covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. From deportation, exile, and estrangement, the invitation is to begin a new relationship with Yahweh, like the love relationship Yahweh had with David. 
Again, this starts with listening, inclining one's ear to God, to the word of God. Verse 4, see, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and a commander for the peoples. What Yahweh asked of David is now being transferred to the people of Israel as they begin this new chapter or new day in the land God promised their ancestors. So the Davidic uh, reign is long gone. It ended with the Babylonian exile. And now as this group of refugees, exiles, they come back and restart. They're to restart what God had started in David. And they are the ones who are going to be the witness, who are going to be the leaders, who are going to be the example to the people who become a part of that land and territory. Verse 5, see, you shall call all nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. The call to be a blessing to the nations of the world as God continues to bless the people God has chosen to be a light to the nations will draw nations to come to know Yahweh. This goes back to Abraham and Sarah, the call to be blessed, to be a blessing. This group coming back to restart and rebuild are called to the same covenant that God made with Abraham and Sarah. They're to be a people that God blesses for one reason, that they will be a blessing to the world and the nations of the world be drawn, will be drawn to know this God who created the universe and all that it is in it, this God who shaped and molded us in God's image so we might know that we're beloved children of God and God is with us. Verses 6 to 7, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. So we have this call. We have this invitation. Seek. Seek the Lord. Call upon the Lord and turn away from the wickedness and the unrighteousness. And guess what you're going to find? You're going to find mercy. You're going to find pardon, forgiveness. Because God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. The conclusion of our reading. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The invitation of this little reading in Isaiah 55 is, God can start over to begin anew. And God's original intent of blessing a people to be a blessing can always be relaunched, restarted, reclaimed by God. And God invites us to be a part of that adventure. God invites us to be that light to the world that reflects God's unconditional love. And as Christians, we're going to point people to Jesus. I hope that you, uh, you uh, take some time to think about the invitation that God is extending to you during the season of Lent and how each of us has a responsibility and a role to play in being the people that God wants us to be for the sake of the world. God bless.